Okay. Uh, first off, sorry for the glasses glare, but I'm gonna need them. So... I don't want people getting confused. Because... Yeah... I like horror books. Yeah, I like Harry Potter. And a bunch of other crap. But... I am... I'm Christian. Okay? I'm... And no, I'm not here to shove God down your throat. I'm not gonna just... I'm not gonna be an in-your-face kind of person about what I believe, but if something is said that goes against my belief, I'm going, I'm, more than likely, I won't say something just to be nice about it, but if it's something that really gets, messes with me or cuts deep, I'm going to say something. I'm just telling people ahead of time that I'm going to do this. So I want to take the time and show you a few of my favorite verses to show you why it is that I am who I am, or why I believe what I believe. Um, well, I find the first one. I was, I was 12, no, it was, it was 2010 when I got saved. Uh, seven years I was 11 it was May of 2010 I believe well it was May of 2010 that I got baptized so I explained in one of the first videos about my health issues and everything well in that video that I explained it you, you probably couldn't tell but I was in the uh, nursery at church with Kenzie's little sister, Harley Jo. We were setting up or something for VBS, Vacation Bible School. But here's what, I was 14 when I found out, when I found out about my brain. I know, you'd think they'd know by then, right? But no. Not really. So, we um, took the time. So, it was one of the first times, or it was in January still. We were, it was my dad's birthday to be exact. My dad's, my dad's birthday, it was five years ago on my dad's birthday that this happened. I was home from school because I had a bad headache. Or, no, 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 no. My mom and her best friend come and got me from school because I had a headache. They were going to Crothersville to do something. I think it was a Bible study or something. I don't remember. And my mouth started going numb. Like, I started going numb. I get that with those headaches sometimes. Those are severe s symptoms. I, um... I can go numb, like half of my body will go numb and tingly, or I can get double vision, which is in one eye, okay, you know how you look at a light bulb for a long time and then you look away and there's this fuzzy, feel, like fuzziness over your eye that you can't see? It's like that, but it's in one eye. It's usually in my left eye. So this is, this is the Bible scripture that got me through that and why I said that day my mom was on the phone with the doctor's office when I was talking to her and she was freaking out and I just in the back seat of the truck I go mom Robin what are y'all worried about God's got me and they both stopped what they were doing kind of glanced back at me this is a 14 year old telling us that how do we not know that already? Childlike faith that I wish I still had. I mean, I know, I know here and here that he's got me, right? But that doesn't stop my brain from thinking, 
oh my god how could this get any worse how could it how just what could be worse about this situation so I'm gonna read it it's uh, the whole chapter of Psalms 91 it's 16 verses so I'm gonna read each verse one at a time explain what it means to me and yeah whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty so whoever believes will rest in God's shadow or God's protection basically verse 2 I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress fortress my God in whom I trust like I'm doing right now I'm gonna tell people that I trust God verse 3 surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence that one's pretty straightforward he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find a refuge his face his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart God will cover you will protect you will shield you you will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day he'll take away your fear if you let him nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys in midday midday again he'll take away your fear a thousand may fall at your right side ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you. Even though other people are getting these horrible things happening, if you believe and if you wholeheartedly trust God, you'll be safe. You will observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. That, I'm pretty sure that's referring to when you go to heaven and you can see hell I, I, I don't know or it might be talking about on earth I'm not a preacher not a youth leader or anything but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do videos like this more I think it'll help people really determine who I am. I hope people don't come away from or uh, you know, turn me away because I'm a Christian or I do these videos. If, I mean, if these videos aren't for you, then you don't have to watch these. I mean, I'm not gonna be mad if people don't watch them. I'm just like, this is here. This is, I'm trying to make people understand if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most higher dwelling no harm will come will overtake you no disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone you will tread on the lion and the cobra and the cobra you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now this particular psalm was written by we don't know I don't think it was David I think it might have been David or King David David and Goliath it still astounds me that some people in America like or in near me anyway they don't know these Bible stories that I grew up hearing it's it's like, um, my pastor's daughter, uh, one of my pastor's daughters went off to Washington to help plant a church. 
or help be part of a church to teach. And she said it was like nothing you'd ever seen before. Like these people, they don't know the Bible stories we know. They, they don't. These people, in more ways than one, are astounding and it's just, it's kind of terrifying. And that's, I'm hoping to use this channel to try to bring more people to God. But if I can't, I can't. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force it and I'm gonna, see, in the Bible it, it even tells you you can't be forceful with the teaching. Let me just read that. It's Matthew 5, 16. It, well, it's Matthew chapter 5. It's a Sermon on the Mount. And verses 15 to six, or 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on, a, on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The salt and the light. Both things there are, you can have too much of as a person. And I don't want to force it down anybody's throat because that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to tell people about God, not try to hammer it in to them. Like, you, you're not supposed to hammer in what you believe. And, yeah, I know I said it before, but with my mom being a youth leader, I have, I've got a pretty fair knowledge of this book, and I got a pretty fair understanding of it. Especially for my mom, from my mom and my dad. My dad being a deacon and my mom being the youth leader. And my little sister uh, being, <laughs> she's wholeheartedly Christian and I can't, I mean, I mean, I know I am. Well, I hope I am, but you can tell People can tell, they're supposed to be able to tell when they meet you, that there's something different about you, something they can't place. And my sister is really one of those people. I've had friends of mine come to me and say, there's something about your sister that I can't place. Something, something I want to know, like, what is it? Like one of my friends who was an atheist at the time. I, yeah, I was an atheist. Uh, she asked me what it was and I said, you're probably going to get upset or angry with me, but it's God is what that is. It's, I mean, it says in the Bible that there's supposed to be something different about you, something that draws people in or turns people away from you depending on who they are or how the state of their heart is. And I'm happy to say that that friend became a believer, believer in Christ over the summer. Uh, I'm happy to say that. And my sister has been the gateway of bringing people to Christ for a lot of people and she doesn't realize it. Her best friend, Landon, um, she got him into coming to church. Her other friend, uh, Sam, she got her into, uh, she was talking to her about God for months and Sam got saved right there and then with Chrissy. And I know that this is an outlet that I'm going to try to use 
to have weekly Bible lessons on Mondays because everybody hates Monday. So I'm just going to try to be a little bit of sunshine in the rain, I guess you'd say. I hope people actually get into this one.